Uh, thank you. I must admit it was quite a long time when I was standing in front of the lights like this. <laughs> But yeah, let, let's start. Uh, thanks for the introduction. And uh, as, I, as the colleague said, I'm coming from the Joint Research Center and I will present today my presentation on no code geo AI. So uh, I would start uh, for, uh, you know, the title is there, but why, 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 why do we do it? And why no geo, uh, no code geo AI could be a possible way forward? is uh, fortunately I'm, I'm less in, in the talks today, so everybody was talking a lot about 20 petabytes a day, uh, new satellites, so we have a geo big data explosion and it's uh, coming from everywhere, uh, from the satellites, so from the sensors, uh, from everywhere. I mean, uh, from the IoT, uh, from the uh, smart cars that uh, are constantly, uh, constantly uh, having the cameras on, from the smartphone, so we have a lot of data. The data, I think it's overwhelming, and this is happening in the last uh, decade, and it's uh, just accelerating, so we, we don't go down with uh, data production. And yeah, this is the reason why we need something to process this data. It's impossible to process this data uh, by humans, uh, so we need machines, and hopefully for us, uh, AI is there. So, um, I particularly like the, 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 the picture on the right. Uh, we have a data, no problem, but if we sort it out, we at least know what is there. If we arrange it, uh, if we present it visually, it's very different, we, we know something. And if we explain it with the story, then uh, we have something out of this data. But at the end of the day, I think everybody is into actionable data that is useful, that can bring us to better decisions, to better better solutions and, 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 and solve some problems. Um, the, the other image is uh, what we done, uh, and uh, this is uh, also part of my team. Uh, we, we used uh, convolutional neural networks to, uh, to in random forest for multi-class segmentation uh, of Sentinel-2 imaginary. And we did this uh, two, three years ago, uh, and we were very satisfied with the, with, uh, with the, with the overall quality of our solution. And uh, I think on many of the presentations, even before, and the presentations that we are going to follow, will show that this uh, this field is uh, quite progressing, uh, has a big progress. So, um, of course, uh, there are some challenges. Uh, probably the first number one challenge is we don't have n uh, not enough uh, AI experts. So uh, maybe this is not the case for the big ICT companies, but I think it's uh, definitely visible in many other domains uh, like government, public organizations, uh, and, and etc. So many other also big companies which are not tech uh, uh, need AI expertise to build their products and services and also to improve their, their products and services. There is also a high barrier between uh, to, to for the domain experts, so we cannot expect, expect that people, everybody will start building AI models from scratch tomorrow and they are going to become coders. So it's not so easy to, 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 to change the domain. And there is definitely, I think, uh, even in the pr first presentation uh, today, that there is a lack of understanding between AI and geodomain experts, but this, I think, is get even uh, worse when you have a lot of stakeholders on the on the table uh, and people with, uh, let's say, from, from other fields, from non-technical fields, so the lack of understanding is getting uh, even bigger. Uh, on the other side, uh, there is slow prototyping process. Uh, to build a solution takes time. Uh, you need to know code, you need to write code, usually you re reuse the code, and there are many other bottlenecks and inefficiencies. So, yeah, as, as uh, Morpheus said, we have uh, two pills what to choose. Uh, there is also this, uh, this slide, it's I think very important and um, it shows the main trends in artificial intelligence in, in the last couple of years. The, I would say the deep learning has, uh, explosion has started 10 years ago, but this is let's say in the last two, three years. And these trend uh, changes are, uh, this, this uh, graph, the first graph, it's uh, about NLP, uh, so it's about uh, language, but I think applies for computer vision and for everything, so it's, uh, it's, it's a general, general trend. And the trend is that we have more compute, uh, 
uh, and that's I think obvious. We we have uh, more cloud compute, we have in more GPUs produced, etc. So the compute is getting bigger. Uh, on the other side, we have bigger data sets. And as I, in the first slide, I said, it's not only the data sets, now we have variety of data. And we are building bigger and bigger models uh, for, for just to, to, to say that at least in ALMP, the, the models for, I don't know, uh, five years were in million, billion, three years ago, now we have trillion parameters models. So the, the scale is really almost exponential. And at least in ALP, but in many domains, the test loss or the quality of the prediction is getting more and better, better and better. So these are the main trends, but I also would like to uh, emphasize one more trend, which is uh, simpler AI code. But this is not like I can bet on it, or if there is a question, yeah, this, is it a simpler? Uh, I would uh, really need to explain uh, in, in details that there are parts of the code which are getting simpler, and there are parts of the code which will always be complicated when you describe the model or in, in details, etc. But uh, there are many wrappers right now to, 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 to directly take the model. There are many uh, places where you, you can really uh, uh, get the model in two, three lines, and, and therefore I also put the hugging face as one of the uh, repositories with a lot of uh, artificial intelligence models that can be accessed very easily and trained and pre-trained, etc. So we have, in a way, simpler code to manipulate the models and data, etc. So taking into account the main trends and what I, I've said in the previous slide, my prediction, or let's say, yeah, it's mine, I, I would say I, I, I see it as a next step, uh, that we will have a new wave of, of the automatization in AI, which is no-code AI. This no-code AI, uh, or no-code geo AI, uh, it's coming, I think, and it's, uh, I think some of the smaller things are appearing in, in, uh, in many domains. Uh, uh, sorry to, 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 to say that this talk is pretty general, but you will see why we, we, we present it here, because we want to build a prototype in, in, in geo domain. So the idea would be at the end of the day to use the data, the models, and to have some kind of a simplified uh, uh, graphical uh, uh, user interface tool that you can really plug and play these things and, and, and press play and it will give some results. And uh, you will see in the later slides that this is uh, almost possible today. Uh, it happened before. Uh, I'm not saying something that is, uh, you know, uh, revolutionary, but it, it, it happened a couple of times in, 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 in the industry. The first and the most obvious time, and I think the, the biggest breakthrough was uh, replacing the terminal with uh, graphical user interface in the Apple computer and later in Windows. And I think this, in fact, uh, made the whole computer era or personal computer reality. Nobody previously wanted to type commands to, to use the computer. So as, as soon as we had graphical user interface in the computers, the all people use now the computers and, and it goes to mobile phones. Uh, very similar happened to uh, web design or building websites. So you have now what you see is what you get editors. You, you, you write the code, but you immediately see what, what you're building. So uh, it, it's, it's very similar in, in, in what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say. And I put MailChimp uh, as automation for mails, but you have, uh, I would say, a zillion, uh, zillion of applications that automate many parts of, of, uh, of uh, computer, uh, of, of processes in finance, in, in, in many domains. So it's, uh, it's, it's the next step of automation using graphical user interface. Uh, if we put it in the domain of AI, what, uh, what will be the pros and cons? Uh, the pros, uh, the, 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 the advantages will be there will be bigger uh, accessibility, there will be definitely bigger usability, but accessibility I think is the key because many people will have access to this kind of uh, tools and will use it directly without too much explaining. Usability will be better. Uh, speed in developing uh, uh, solutions will be also faster because you can plug and play the, the, the things and, 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 and uh, build a solution with, let's say, uh, fast, not, not so uh, slow. Uh, they will be portable and interoperable by design. So these kind of systems need to be portable, interoperable to, to, to talk to each other and to, 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 to be easily ported. Uh, 
and uh, let's say uh, also our democratization of uh, AI. I mean, uh, now uh, we don't have too many people building AI. Okay, we have a lot of people using AI, may maybe not knowing about it, but in a way uh, for the people that build it, it's not so much. But in this case, we will have a bigger percentage of people that at least can see what the technology is capable of and, and can also uh, see in reality how it looks like, at least on a higher level. And also it will improve communication because if people know more, they will at least understand what they're doing uh, or not understand what they're doing. That's, that's a different story, but I think in the end it will improve uh, knowledge and communication and it will be a big boost of productivity, that's for sure. Um, a lack of uh, customization, it's definitely the first, uh, let's say, con or the first uh, disadvantage because if you have pre-prepared things, then uh, to customize them uh, would be, let's say, more complicated for a regular user. Uh, for a professional user, he, he should be able to edit and do these things. Number of templates, uh, you can put some workflows, but uh, if you don't have enough or, or there are very few or they are not covering something, yeah, it's, it's definitely something that will be a problem. And uh, maybe in a way uh, you will have less understanding because people will use things that maybe they don't understand that, uh, that much. But yeah, uh, transparency and explainability are just uh, like uh, keywords here that uh, if we have this kind of tools, then uh, if many people are using it, I think at the end of the day, people will know them better now it depends, uh, are they going to be better transparent or uh, explainable? So uh, what we try to do is to, to, to make a research. Uh, and these are the research questions. First, to see uh, what is out there. Uh, no code AI, auto ML, low code AI. Uh, we also focus more on open source, but there are also proprietary solutions. Are there general, are there specific, what's the software stack, are there similarities and differences, and uh, how this idea can be implemented at the end of the day in uh, data spaces, uh, Eurogeos, uh, AI for AO, and at the end maybe MLOps. So yeah, these are our research questions. Uh, this is something that we started relatively recently. So. Uh, which we are now, let's say, in the process of mapping what is out there and we will probably publish a report, hopefully at the end of the year or maybe a little bit later, uh, that will show what is out there and uh, what is capable at this moment. So, fortunately for us, uh, there are a couple of uh, startups that uh, that are emerging in this area and they are, build, <laughs> they are writing very nice blogs explaining who is doing what. That, that's very nice. So, uh, because they want to find a niche where they can sell their products and services. So these are, let's say, two examples. Uh, one is from Levity. Uh, another one is from CB Insights. That's not a startup, but Levity is a startup that maps different low-code, no-code AI solutions and who is doing what. And uh, yeah, these are the basic for the analysis, but we also will use a couple of other data sources to, to, to find all the, the, the key players. I also must say, because I, I was doing this recently until previous week, the big uh, companies, uh, Microsoft, um, Google, and Amazon, and Apple already has this kind of tools available in a, in a, in a, in a way. Uh, but there are also many, there are also uh, startups and, and uh, medium uh, sized companies. Uh, yeah, this, this is just an idea that we have uh, to, to, to build a prototype, hopefully maybe next year. Uh, the most important tool would be Ludwig, uh, which is an open source tool and it's a declarative machine learning framework. In a nutshell, you really write uh, slow uh, low code commands which replace uh, bigger codes and uh, with this you can describe the whole machine learning pipeline and uh, you can build a model and it, it really it's not a big uh, it's not a big code that below has a lot of code and it's pretty famous on github uh, we also compare it with other tools but it looks very very promising horovot is to distribute the training and uh, the previous speaker was talking about ray we, we will think about horovot or ray we will see but i put on the uh, on my presentation horovot uh, for, for distributing the task on many machines uh, to run in parallel. And yeah, this is the initial idea. Maybe things will change, uh, but we also will use some kind of visual editor uh, to build the, the, 
the, the modules to, that uh, will describe the code. And uh, yeah, the potential impact, this will, uh, we foresee potential impact in GEOS uh, uh, initiative, uh, because as, uh, as I, I will mention again, we, we will build the pro uh, first prototype in, in the geospatial domain, because the team knows quite well geospatial domain, so it's not so difficult for us to build it and test the idea there. And also our main project is in geospatial domain, so uh, it will have a definitely impact on geos, but it will also have uh, impact on uh, data spaces, uh, which is a big uh, initiative for the European Commission and European Union, and uh, we will probably have some connections with AI for AO in the future as we build uh, something and we, we made the reports. So, just uh, short conclusions. We identified a lot of solutions. As I said, uh, Amazon Web Services, Azure, and Google have, have their own tools already. There are some promising tools uh, uh, coming from Hugging Face, but Ludwig and Horovod from Uber are very interesting. Apple has its own, which is called Trinity. Trinity is in geospatial domain, but they also have a tool for, for building uh, low-code, no-code AI in, in Apple, but they don't have too much publication, so that's a problem. Uh, and as I mentioned, it's quite widely applicable. And uh, first prototype we'll be using uh, in, uh, we're building it in GeoAI using all open source technology. So yes, this is more or less my talk and we are open for collaboration on this idea. And uh, today was a great to, to also listen to the previous presentation, in fact, which gave me a lot of ideas what we can uh, implement from them. And uh, this is it, thank you.